More of the Zach Gelb Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. All right, welcome back in 609-919-9200. Mark Eckel is going to join us in just a few seconds. Remember, he was tweeting us yesterday after the whole Ray Dittinger interview with his thoughts on uh, Christian McCaffrey. Eckel likes uh, Christian McCaffrey. Doesn't love him, but likes him. And we'll see if the Eagles do draft him with the draft being in Philadelphia with the pick being number 14 overall. Let me just real quickly, I know I just played it a few moments ago, but I'll play it again since Mark Eckel is going to be joining us in just a few seconds. Here's what Didinger has to say yesterday about what if the Eagles uh, do pick Christian McCaffrey at number 14. Christian McCaffrey, if that's the pick at 14, your reaction would be? I, you know, it'd be hard to argue against it because he, he did have such a great college career. And, you know, th- th- this organization has made – no attempt to hide the fact that uh, one of their priorities is is bringing good players and putting them around Carson Wentz uh, and guys that are playmakers better than what they had last year. And McCaffrey is certainly that. Um, I mean, he wouldn't be my choice at 14 because I, I just don't know. To me, he's not a true running back. I mean, the Eagles need a running back. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you can't go into the season with, with Sproles and Smallwood as your two running backs. They need a running back. Uh, I just don't know if Christian McCaffrey, in my mind, fits that description as an NFL running back. I just don't know that he's a guy that, you know, in the fourth quarter when you got four minutes to go and you're trying to run out the clock with a seven-point lead, that he's a guy that's going to be a closer for you. I, I, you know, I mean, he's a big play guy. He'll hit some home runs. But I just don't know if he's that, you know, bell cow back. You know, it's, that's, I, I see him as a guy who's going to be a 15 to 20 touch a game kind of player, a, a guy that – you know, can be productive and can make some big plays, but I just don't know that he's a guy you can lean on as a heavy-duty kind of back. I, I know he's being compared a lot to Brian Westbrook. Um, I see some of the similarities, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's a guy that you can, you can give the ball to as much as the Eagles gave the ball to Brian Westbrook. I think he's a guy that has a specific role, uh, and he's a terrific receiver. As to, in terms of being a receiver out of the backfield, he's certainly the best of this class. But at 14... I don't know. I don't think I would take him at 14. But I know there are some people at the Eagles organization that like him. Uh, and it wouldn't be a huge shock to me if that's the way they chose to go. All right. That's what Ray Dinger had to say about Christian McCaffrey. Let's bring on Mark Eckel from NJ.com. Mark, uh, react to that. What do you think about what Ray had to say? Um, I, I don't disagree with – I mean, that's his opinion. I, I, I Here's my thing. When, when, when Ray says – and again, I don't want to – I mean – Everybody has their own opinion. I, I like McCaffrey. I do. I, I would not mind him at fourteen in the least, uh, depending on who else is there. I mean, that, that, that's you can't. I mean, you have to tell me who else is available. Like, who, who am I taking All right, him over? So let's do that. Let's say Williams is gone, Foster is gone. You're looking at Conley, and I know that's a different situation with today. Let's say you have Conley, Davis, McCaffrey, and John Ross. Who are you taking? Oh, John Ross is there. Yeah, John Ross is there. I got to take John Ross, I think. Okay, but then take John Ross guess, out of but, the equation. Take Ross out of oh, the then, equation. Then I'm taking – and Foster's gone, you said, right? Yes. Then I'm, take, I'm taking Christian. Okay. I'm, I'm taking McCaffrey. Um, Conley today, everything changes with Conley because – and again, I, I mean, I, we, we have to know more, more details. I mean, but it's a shame that it's, it's – if it's not – if it's true, then the guy, he could go to jail. No but question. If it's not true – if it's not true, if, if the, then the girl should, should go to jail because, you know, if he made something up just to try to get, you know, and doing it, coming out at a time like this, you know, two days be, be, before the draft, it's, that, that's, that's terrible if, if it's not true. Um, and we don't know. I mean, he's, he's saying it's nothing, it's, it's not true at all. Um, it just, it's, it's a bad thing that they were coming out. I mean, it's, just, it's, I don't know. I don't know. If you can afford it, I mean, someone's going to take him, right? Eventually, but um, his his people better clear this up. If if he is indeed innocent, he, his people better clear it up be, before Thursday night. Well, let me interrupt real quickly and just let's go further on that because I do agree with everything you said about Conley because we all know in the legal world that it's going to be that you're innocent until proven guilty, but in the public opinion, you're guilty until proven yeah. innocent. And that's just the reality of it. And I've been around this type of situation. Uh, when I was covering Temple, Praise Martin Aguica had a kid that was he was kicked out of the university, kicked off the team, and the girl made it up. And he ended up returning to Temple and got his degree and won a championship. But you're exactly right. In these next you know few hours, he's got to come on out publicly 
and release some type of statement. I know he's denied it on Twitter already uh, with his teammate, but this is something that these next you know few days and how he, he, he really just tries to uh, attack this thing, it's going to be very critical for him because this was someone that some people thought was going to be top 10, and now we have no clue where he's going to go, Mark. Right. So I'll, I'll say this about it the whole situation and it's easy for for me to say but the guy is a couple days away from becoming a millionaire right i mean let's face it like you said he's going to be a top 10 at worst a top 20 pick whatever he's 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 a couple days away from becoming you know having his life set for him basically if if that's me i don't put myself i don't i don't leave the house for for a month (laughs) i'm serious i mean you don't put yourself, and I'll, again, if the girl made it up, the girl, I, I really strongly believe if the girl made it up, the girl should get punished for that. You can't just make stuff up mm-hmm. um, and ruin and try to ruin a guy's life. Um, but it, even if it isn't true, don't put yourself in that kind of situation. Don't even be involved. Don't even, don't just, you know what I'm saying? You're, 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 it happened on April 9th. So you're a couple weeks away from, from becoming. Yeah, but here's the thing, Mark. Like, let's just say he was in an elevator and the girl, you know, came on to him. And we we don't know that. And he just brings him into the hotel room and this girl's crazy. And I don't want to say that she is or not because we don't know all these facts. But if that's the case, then it's hard to fault him from that aspect of it. Well, yeah, it is. But just don't. I mean, players get told. I mean, Gary Cobb, who I know very well, played for the Eagles. He works for, for the league. He spends time. Part of his job is, like, to talk to young players. And he tells them. You have a target on your back, and you know you have to be smart and you have to be careful because there are people out there that are going to try to get you in trouble or or try to get you in a bad spot where you can and are going to ask you for money or whatever the situation might might be. So again, it, it's um, I, I I hope the kid didn't do anything wrong and it comes out and he gets taken where he's supposed to get taken in draft, but. That's probably not going to happen. I mean, he's probably going to go lower than he was supposed to, no matter what happens. Even if he, even if he is innocent, people, like you said, there, there's a, there's a perception out there now. Ian Rappaport, I mean, Ian Rappaport did chime in today and said that he's now no longer going to be attending the draft, and he was supposed to be made available tomorrow for immediate availability. Um, I'm going to assume uh, that the reason he's not going to go is because he doesn't want to talk about this. But sure. don't you think he has to say something? to try to just change this perception if he does, from what everyone says, he thinks that he's innocent here? Yeah, he needs it. That's where his people, his agent, his, you know, if he has a publicist, whatever the case might I guess his agent at, at, at this point, they have to make him look like, you know, again, if he is totally innocent, they have to get that out and make it out. And, yeah, I would, I, I would go to the I would say, listen, I have nothing to hide. I did nothing wrong. And, and get it. I mean, it's, it's, it's somewhat similar to what the Eagles went through last summer with Nelson Aguilar. Now, the Eagles didn't go through it, but Nelson Aguilar sure. went through it, where he was accused of sexual assault. And as it came, as it turned out, charges were never filed. He, he, he didn't do anything wrong, according to the law. He did nothing wrong, and no charges were wherever. But again, that, you know, there's, there's a stigma that's out there. Even though he did nothing wrong and was found I mean, he wasn't even found innocent because he, he was charged. The, the, the police looked into it and didn't even find enough to bring charges against him. So, and and I, I, if, if, if I'm not mistaken um, with the Conley thing now, their, their charges have not been filed. No, they have not. They have not. And I don't it's expect them. I would have to assume you don't expect them to be charged uh, by Thursday. People expect this to be a long process from everything I'm reading on this matter. And that's what's going to, and that's. That's going to so affect him. It's going to hurt him. Yeah, and, and what do you do if you're – let's say you're the Eagles. It could be Eagles. If you're a team that, A, needs a quarterback, and B, had Conley rated as one of the top ones on your board. Which the Eagles do, right? You, yeah, You right. said they yeah. really like him. <laughs> and not just Eagles. I mean, I mean, there's other – I mean, he was I – I wasn't sure if he was going to make it to 14, to be Fair. honest with you. Um, so that, let's just say he makes it to 14 now. And McCaffrey doesn't, and, and Ross doesn't, and Foster doesn't. What do you do with your Eagles? I, I don't think you can take them if, if this is still hanging out there. Can you can can you afford to take a guy and then he is found guilty and he goes to jail? 
Yeah, the the one thing that I was actually we were, it was funny when we had Ray on yesterday. We were talking about uh, Conley, and he kept on saying that with that first round pick, you want to take someone that is a safe pick. And everything that he's heard, he had no off the field issues, and it shows you just how much this changes. Because I would have to guess that no, you can't take him right now. This is a impending uh, potential litigious situation. I don't see how you could take him uh, with with that hanging over your head. I agree. I mean, especially at fourteen it, with the draft being in Philadelphia. Yeah, that too. But, um, but even so, I mean, even if you're the, no matter who you are, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it, it's a shame because if the kid didn't do anything wrong, if he really didn't, like, like you said, if he was on the elevator and if he was, he was the, and he's a victim here, that's that's terrible. That, it's awful. That, that would happen to him. Awful. That, Mark Eckel with us. Yeah, and go this ahead. year's draft has more of this than this is. I mean, I mean, this is obviously the most serious, but. But but you have a couple guys now. Ruben Foster, one who I who I like a lot. To be honest, as a player, I mean, I he's one of my favorite players in this draft. Um, but but he has the gotten thrown out of the combine and the, and the bad um, the urine test that came back. You know, he didn't fail it per se, but he came back di- diluted, just like um, Jabril Peppers. J- J- Jabril Peppers, same thing. You, you know, do you how 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 does that affect their their draft status? I don't know how much it's going to affect Foster because I think he's a really good player. With Peppers, I believe that, and I think Peppers could be a stud in this league with just how explosive he is, but I think teams don't know where to use Peppers. I don't believe that the sample is going to really hurt uh, Peppers. I think it's more that teams just don't know where to put this guy. Well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Peppers guy. Oh, I like him. I, I, say, I say shame on you if you don't know what to do with him because he's a football player. You just, you, your coach is fu- – if you have a good coach, you find a way to use a guy that that talented. And then, and I, as as a scout told told me when I was doing my my draft previews last week, you know, he's a guy. You take him, he can help you in all three phases of the game. No question. He, you you could put him at running back for a few plays. Oh he no question. Harbaugh did it all the time. For you know, I mean, and he's a great special teams guy. Yeah, no no question. So, I mean, You're exactly right. I, yeah, I, I like Peppers you know, a lot, and I'll tell you. Uh, even though he put himself in a bad situation with what happened at the Combine, I got a chance to speak with him at the Heisman uh, in that media availability. He's a bright mm-hmm. kid. He's an entertainer, yes. too. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 it's funny. All the guys that I like are, are all getting you know, <laughs> It's usually that trouble. way, Mark. <laughs> Con, I, Conley wasn't my favorite, but, but Conley was I, – I, yeah, he's good. I, I like Lattimore better. I'm not going to – I mean, some people tell you oh, Conley, but no, I, I think – Well, how about this? Oh, hold on. Real, real quickly. How about Lattimore chiming in on this on Twitter today? Like, if I'm his agent, I'm telling him, shut up. Don't get involved with this Conley thing. I know you're defending your teammate, but that's stupid of Lattimore to put his name in this. Yeah, he probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I mean, I, he, I, again, it shows you that. Well, I guess you, you look at it two ways. One is, yeah, a lot of more. Don't get come on. It's you, the you optics. <laughs> yeah, but he, it shows you that he's a good teammate. That he's a guy that you know is going to bat for his for his for his buddy. I guess. Yeah, you know? but, but it shows him he's a dope. If if he did do this, if Conley did this, right. and, and Lattimore's defending, he looks like an idiot. Right. If he right. Um. Yeah. That that's exactly. See, I, I've talked to a couple of scouts today just yeah. to say, hey, what does this do to, you know, and a couple of guys told me they don't, they, they, uh, and again, I don't know if they're hoping this more than they, they believe it, but they think he, he didn't do anything wrong. Okay. So then if you feel well enough and you feel like you gathered your uh, enough information and you feel like he'll be fine and this won't be a problem, then take him. If that's what those scouts think, then those teams should take him, right? Sure. Now, well, me, but, but let's see if that happens. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to bet on where he's going to go now because I really have no idea. It's tough. It's impossible to handicap. Mark Echo with us right now from NJ.com. Let's tape that um, a, a step further with Dalvin Cook and Joe Mixon. Uh, what are you hearing about them and what information do teams have uh, on them and how comfortable do you feel some teams feel about taking them? I'm, I'm told this by most of the people I've talked to. They they have more concerns about Cook than they do about Mixon, believe it or not. Yeah, I heard that from um, a few people. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Mixon has the one terrible incident that was captured on video, and and the whole world has seen the video now, or anybody who cares has seen the video now. And that, you know, but there, that's like there, there hasn't been a lot of other things other than that one one terrible well, you know, but where, how where, about where the event? The girl. Yeah, but how about the event where he supposedly ripped up the 
the ticket and threw it in the female officer's face. And also some of the events that's our legend high school as well. Like those are red flags, right? A little bit. Yeah. I mean, they're, they, they, they both have, there's both, they're both guys that if, if you, there are some teams that those will, aren't going to take them. Mm-hmm. But like I said, you asked me about cook and the guys have told me that cook has a laundry list of stuff and much more serious. I mean, the the bad, the mix is the, is the it's the the video of him of him punching the girl in the in the restaurant. That's I mean the tear of the parking ticket. No, not a not a good thing. But if, if that's what, if that's all he did, and that was the only thing on his record was tearing up the parking ticket, he's the twelfth pick of the draft or something. I mean, he's, I agree. He's that good. I mean, um, he, <laughs> and I don't I don't know where he's going to go. I mean, there are some days I think you know what somebody's going to take him in the in the, in the first round because he's just too good not to. Uh, and and they'll they'll spin it however they they want. And then other days I say, nah, there's just no way teams can't. He's, he's going to fall. But well, here's so, he's I, another guy. Here, this year's draft. Yeah, by, by the way, 32 drafts yeah. covered. This draft is the has the most intrigue and most. Um, usually I have a pretty good feel for where guys. And I'm I'm, 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 no I'm off a this couple. One. There's there's so many guys. I just like we just talked about you know Conley now and Nixon and Cook. And even other, even take away the character stuff, just the quarterbacks. I mean, where are they go? I mean, I wouldn't take one of them in the first round. I don't like any of them in the first. But you round. know they're going. To. Oh yeah, three of them will go. There'll be three in the first round. But Maybe I don't like four. them. Uh, yeah, it Maybe. could be four. Kaiser thinks he's a whole lot better than he is. <laughs> we all know that. He thinks he's gonna be the best quarterback of all time. That's not gonna be the case with Kaiser. Oh, I'm not even counting Kaiser. I think they, some. I'm being told Davis Webb is gonna go in the bottom. Wow. Of the okay. All right. So, yeah, I mean, so Mahomes, Trubisky, Watson, and then him. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, that's possible. I'm, I, and I'm with you. I think I like Watson more than most because he's, he's a winner, and I like winners. Same and, page here. Yeah. And and if you can score that many points against that Alabama defense, twice two straight years, that that's something special. I don't know. I mean, that's I would take if if I was a team and needed and needed a quarterback, I wouldn't mind taking Deshaun Watson. I, I you know. Yes, there's flaws in his game. and I don't think any of them are ready to play opening day this year like Carson Wentz was. Um, but I think, you know, you, you take it to Sean Watson and you let him sit and watch a little bit, I think you're going to end up with, a, with a, a pretty good quarterback who's going to win a lot of games for you. Wrap it up with Mark Eccles, kind enough to join us right now from NJ.com. Uh, get him back to Mixon and Dalvin Cook. And this is what I said all week long. I said teams do their due diligence – um, yeah, I don't like what they did, especially with Mixon and, and Cook. You know, they're misogynistic people for the acts that they've done in the past. But with that being said, they're young. They're going to get another chance, and some team's going to take them. So if the Eagles do draft them, even though I don't like their actions, I would be okay with them drafting them. But let's say if the second round does come and both Mixon and Cook are available, and let's say the Eagles pick Mixon just because we've seen the video. What do you think the reaction would be from the fans in Philly that are at the draft? <sighs> It'll be mixed. I mean, if just my own my own take from people on social media that follow me on Twitter or, or on Facebook or, or whatever. It's it's about fifty fifty. With some saying, "Hey, the kid made a mistake. Give him, he's such a good player. I don't you know I could over because we need him and he's going to be this that and the other thing." Take him. And other ones are like, I don't care how good he is. I saw, I saw the video. You didn't know. Just don't take him. So, I, here's the thing: Do the Eagles want to like? And again, this should not matter in the least. But the draft is in Philly, okay? And that means there's going to be more Eagle fans there than anybody else. Do the Eagles want to? I don't know if the Eagles want to handle the the PR that goes along with this. I, I think I it's a fair you know? point, but the one thing that I'll just say, just to play devil's advocate, sure. and I know it's a different point, but they did handle Michael Vick before in the past, and I know it's a different situation, but it's still one that many people didn't feel comfortable with. And the thing I'll say about that, when Michael Vick started scoring touchdowns, a lot sure. of people forgot about it, and oh, that's the same thing that's going to happen. Listen, I'm I'm the biggest Michael Vick fan, or I, I and and I got to know him, and I mm-hmm. I like him even more after I I got to know him, and I know what he did was terrible, and I don't. Can condone it, but sure. um, he 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 paid his price. Oh yeah, he no question. To, the man went to jail for, and, and came out a different man. He really did, and he did the right he thing. Talked about it, and he did all the right things. He said all the right things. 
Um, that's and, and and there are still people to this day who I argue with about Michael Vick, who who don't like him still. So, but mix. I mean, Mixon. I mean, I read. Did you read the letter that came out? I guess was it late last week where the girl also they they were both uh, quoted in in this letter. No, I didn't. Where, yeah, well, see, I mean, and it's uh, again, who knows? But the 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 girl who's a woman now, I guess, you know, is is in there saying, "Listen, we both did we 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 both did things wrong." Sure, no, yeah, she spit on him, and and supposedly she used offensive language, but it doesn't exactly. make anything right oh, to no, clock no, her. No, exactly. no, I know you're not saying that. I'm just saying. No, no, I'm just saying what the girl said was, mm-hmm. if we could if we could both go back to that night. I think nothing would have happened. I think it would have been a totally different situation, and I regret it. He regrets it. Mm. Um, I've moved on, and I wish nothing but the best for, for, for him going forward. It's nice of her to say. That's a big – I mean, for her to say that. Very nice. Now, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, she could have very easily said, listen, that guy's a punk. He's a thug. I don't want no I, – I hope nobody drafts him. No, that's not what she said. She, now, again, was – did they – I don't know. It was – there's people that say, oh, yeah, they, they paid her to say that. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? But mm-hmm. she did say that, and I guess what we're just speculating on things from what we, we – like, I've never sat down and talked to Joe Mixon. Every team that has any interest in him has. Mm-hmm. So they've gotten a feel for was this a stupid mistake by a kid that it, and it, and it, it'll never happen again, or, you know, this kid's a bad kid. He, this could happen again. You know what I mean? They have. I would think sitting down talking. Like teams, you know, they talk about the combine. A lot of teams, including the Eagles, have brought them into their building to talk to them. They know much more, and should have a better feel. So the team that does take Mixon will be a team that is pretty confident that he's not a bad. He's not as bad a kid as as that one incident showed, and he and he is and he and he is. Sorry for it, and, it, and and he's going to have a clean, you know, a clean record from from here on out. Let me just circle back to something when we were going over the players and who you would take if sure. available. If Williams is available, and I don't think he will be available at fourteen. But if Williams is available at fourteen, is he going to be guaranteed to be picked by the Eagles? Because I love Williams. <sighs> I mean, I, I guarantee I would never guarantee anything in this in this <laughs> <Yeah>. draft. <laughs> He, he, that would be a guy they would obviously, obviously think long and hard about. I mean, who else is – now, who else – give me a dead. You have to give me a choice. Williams and McCaffrey? All right, let's say it's this. Let's just – all these players aren't going to be available, but I'll give you the six names. Let's say Williams, Foster, Conley, Davis, McCaffrey, and John Ross are all available. All right, we'll throw out Conley, obviously, for the obvious reason that we just okay. talked about. I'm not, I don't think Davis is – in the same category as Ross and Williams. I really don't. I, I know some people put him right there. Yeah, I, I, think I like Davis and Williams before Ross. I, Williams oh, you know, being like number Ross. one. I like. I think Ross and Williams. I got Ross and Williams even. And okay. I got Davis at this and third. Fair. Um, so I would say it comes down there to pe- between Ross, Williams, McCaffrey. And, I, see, I'm, I like Foster a lot. I really do. And I know the Eagles do as well. And I know the, Well, that would be tough. Those four, I mean, you can't go wrong, really. I mean – you take any one of those four, you're getting a real good player, and and I, and I don't know how the hell all four of them are going to be there. <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> that means some that means some some teams above them made some bad picks. Well, so, yeah, so that those four no. guys fall. It means maybe the Browns took Trubisky at one, and then well, yeah, well, they had a bunch of Eagles, other stuff. That's not going to happen. Have to hope that both quarterbacks go. That that will definitely yeah. help them if, if at least two quarterbacks are off the board. Um, and you never know if two quarterbacks go. You never know. Maybe a team trades up and tries to get in. You know, within the 14th pick to try to make it three. You never know how those things work right. out. I mean, that's what you. That's what the Eagles want. The Eagles yeah, want you quarterbacks do. to go. They want uh, corners. Well, well, they want a corner too. Maybe. I know, but but but, that, <laughs> but, but, but I'm saying with right, I'm what happened saying. now with Conley, if it frees up Williams and Foster and makes them slide down a little bit, sure. then I'd rather have Williams and Foster than the corners in a lot of this draft. Right, and I think they would also, and I think two safeties. I think both. Jamal Adams and Malik Hooker are, are going to go. Yeah, very early. I, I do agree with that. All right, Mark, so, before we let you yeah, run, um, yeah. what are you doing, by the way, these days? I know that you're writing through the draft, and then is that it? Is the, Are you done? What are you doing? I'm done. April, my last day will be uh, – So where are you going? Where am I going? Are you staying where you are right now, or are you going somewhere else, more tropical? I'm moving – yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm moving to Myrtle Beach. Oh, okay, nice. I'm, I'm retiring and, and moving to Myrtle Beach, and um, – I'm going to just enjoy myself and 
not worry about the, the 2018 draft and who <laughs> fails drug tests and, and, who, <laughs> and, and, and who gets in trouble with the law or anything else. I'll just sit back and relax and say, oh, that's an Eagles took it for them. Well, well, here's the thing. I won't chastise you for being late today because you'll be on vacation next time we have you on, and then you'll be able to come on right on time. Good, yeah, good I don't deal. know. I'm, I really apologize. I, never, I was waiting for you to call. I'm playing with I, you. I never heard the phone, and then I got your text. I'm like, oh, my God. I, I thought maybe you got backed up with your with your previous guest. Because, you know, that well, no, happens sometimes. Yeah, it does. Well, here's the thing. Ryan Leaf was supposed to join us today at 415. He calls in at 512, and I guess his handler told him the wrong time. So – when you, you didn't call in right away, I go, I wish we had Ryan Leaf's number to call him back because, but then I go, <laughs> you know, Echo's going to call in. He'll be safe. And we just rescheduled Leaf for tomorrow. So it was crazy. Welcome to live radio. You know, yep, that's, that's, that's <laughs> appreciate it, Mark. Uh, you're the best. Anytime. Zach. Take care.